first of all, we look for businesses that have enduring quality uh, along with being sensitive for valuations. So that means that there's certain markets where quality typically won't do well. Coming out of bear market or a recession, frothy markets, we typically won't do well. And the second part is in terms of valuation sensitivity, um, you, you, you have to be careful about what you pay. If you have a forward-looking view, chance that you will find enough valuation anomalies, which you have much more backward-looking quality view, you probably won't find. One of the benefits of the business's knowledge is cumulative. So if you looked at the business before, you, you, know, you, you, you can probably get, get around to the crux of it a little bit faster. Uh, but what we try to do is eliminate weaker businesses in, respective, in, 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 in their respective industries and then just analyze one name at a time. So it actually brings it down to relatively small group of companies that we feel have the ability to take to deliver returns on a go-forward basis. So the characteristics that we're looking for in the business are businesses that have high returns, high profitability, relative to their own space. Uh, some business which may be under earning at a particular part of the cycle may be actually very attractive because they may be a trough of the cycle. So you really have to take a forward looking view of if the whole industry is under earning, where the earnings could be on a five year basis. And I think if you look at it, that's where we add a meaningful amount of value in taking the transition from, from, from maybe high level to higher levels. Uh, or maybe just a sustainability growth. Sometimes it may be the return, returns improving from lower level to higher level because they're a cyclical trough for the whole group. There's clearly certain markets where we probably won't do well. When markets are very frothy or coming out of a bear market recession, we typically won't do well. Uh, and I think as you know, the quality has actually done very well over the last uh, three, four years because of declining interest rates. However, if you have a forward view of quality in terms of which business will get better, I think, I think you can still find interesting enough opportunities. So one of the names we like quite a bit, which is a household name, is Facebook, uh, where you have very high insider ownership. The management owns a uh, tremendous amount of the, of, of, of the business, take a very long-term view. They create a lot, lot of shareholder value in terms of just investing with a very you know, forward-looking view on the businesses with over two billion kind of subscribers or users on a monthly basis. So we still feel there's tremendous upside on the revenue per user they can generate outside, you know, outside US. The best way to uh, measure results would be over a full market cycle because quality typically underperforms in a certain market conditions when markets are really excited or frothy. And it tends to protect better in choppier markets. So which is why I think three to five years is a reasonable horizon, but sometimes can be longer. But I think over a full up and a down market is how we should really be measured. I have operated the, a concert mandate uh, over the last few years, and I think what I found is, especially on the global side, not necessarily on the emerging side, but on the global side, it, it does sort of allow to, you know, uh, to bring out some of the best ideas, however, maybe a little more volatility than a typical, little more diversified mandate. Especially in the developed market portfolios, concentrated can, can actually be a very effective way because it, it allows you to sort of distill it down to, you know, uh, 20 names or a handful of names. I think emerging markets in general look pretty attractive. Uh, if you take a very long-term view, emerging markets returns are very similar to developed markets. However, over the last 10 years, you had really haven't done well, which actually is a good starting point if you look at the longer-term emerging market cycle. So valuation attractive, the tremendous reforms that have taken place, uh, but the opportunity set might be a little more different than what, you know, what the indices might be offering you. Our opportunity set in emerging markets is actually very similar in terms of looking for enduring quality at attractive prices. Now, they might be more state-owned companies sometimes or companies which are run by entrepreneurs. So if you look at it from that perspective, we probably bet much more on entrepreneurs, people who know how to navigate uh, the environment that they're operating a lot better than, 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 than the others. So maybe there's a little more focus on that. There's clearly a difference between when you look at emerging markets, developed markets in, 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 in certain ways. For example, the, the country risk and hence the currency risk is a lot higher. Sometimes the political elements become a lot more important or geopolitical elements. Uh, monetary cycles tend to be different. In fact, if you look at developed markets, they're basically three or four uh, monetary policies 
on like emerging markets, you could have 40 different ones and you have Russia cutting rates uh, while, while China might be raising rates. So those cycles are important. And the banking systems can be different in different part of credit cycles. So you really have to look at from an emerging market perspective, country by country, uh, and businesses uh, which can actually flourish in those sort of environments. And that means that typically you would need more names to manage through the issues that you might have at the country level. Hence, we have 50 names in EM in emerging market funds. If I look at, for example, in emerging markets, I quite like Spur Bank in Russia. It's a bank which basically controls half of the deposits. Banking system is consolidated massively in Russia now. And to have a bank which is earning 20% return on equity, selling at five times earnings, basically a tangible book, with 5% dividend deal in the middle of a recession uh, uh, looks pretty attractive. Experience definitely helps in emerging markets because there are cycles which, which can dictate things. I mean, if you've seen banking systems go disappear, they, but typically before they disappear, they look the cheapest. Uh, so I think you really have to focus on how the underlying dynamics might be evolving. So Russia, for example, today the dynamics look very different than what they looked 20 years ago. There was significant improvement. There are other countries where things might be deteriorating. Uh, so you really have to be careful in terms of, and you know, in terms of how the under underpinnings might be changing. The change in dynamics is actually the key determinant of future returns more than the absolute level at any particular time.